A fall morning on the coast of Newfoundland. The boats move out to the jigging ground. It's the tail end of the fishing season for the small boat fishermen. It was salmon and herring first, then came the lobsters, the codfish, the turbot. Now it's squidden time. The squid jigging ground. I suppose every cove in Newfoundland has one. A special place where for some mysterious reason the squid seem to congregate when they have a mind to. The rollers are cranked endlessly. The lines move up and down in the water. The tiny red jiggers with their rings of needle hooks dance in the green waters below the boats, teasing the squid, inviting them to come near. And so the little flotilla of fishermen casually keep the jiggers moving in the morning light as they wait for the squid. The fishermen don't know it yet, but below their boats, the squid are starting to gather. Peculiar creatures, one end an octopus, the other a rubber torpedo. They dart backwards and forwards, jet propelled. They can change color instantly. They can squirt ink. And they can attack those jiggers too, when they feel so inclined. Patience, boys, patience. You'll soon have all the action you want. Below the boat, the underwater armada has gathered. It's time to strike. Here they come. That's not rain or seawater, you see. It's squid juice, one of the hazards of this trade. Each time the squid comes out of the water, it squirts its ink, and it cares not where it lands. And so this is the way it's been on the squid jigging ground the past few years, but particularly in the fall of 79. It was load and go then. Never before had squid been more numerous. In places where the main fishery failed, it was a godsend. In some places, men made more at squid than they did at any other species. Yet for seven or eight years before that, there was scarcely a squid to be found in Newfoundland waters. They mysteriously vanished from our shores. Now they're back. There's been lots of squid now all the time. Oh, plenty of squid. Been right here now in the right here now in the day. Any time of the day, you can wait to squid. Yeah. Funny how they disappeared uh, for a long while. Well, it was yes. They were gone for so many years. There don't seem like anybody know where they went and what happened. For years, see, you couldn't get, you couldn't get, you couldn't get any, not even for bait. Oh. Well, what does it mean now to the fishermen of Plate Cove? Oh God, this is a big, uh, to fishermen of Plate Cove now, there's a big industry now, you know, the squid industry. It's about the biggest now in the fishing. Because they're, they come in here around July and they're here now until the frost will dry again, cold weather. So this is the main fishery? Oh, it's the main fishery here now, squid. So you see the boats coming in, sometimes loaded to the gunnels. It 
it's a convenient fishery. The wharf is often only a few hundred yards away from the jigging ground. A busy place at squidden time. Catching squid is only part of the battle. While some are sold fresh from the boat, most are chewed. This means that the head and insides are removed. Once you get used to it, it's only a flick of the wrist. But when you've got a boatload of squid to do, it's a fair amount of work. It's not only the men involved in the squid fishery. There are probably just as many, if not more, women working at squid. And not only here on the wharf, you'll find many women out in boat too, jigging away with the best of them. It's a fishery in which anyone can get involved. Once, in the heyday of the salt codfish trade, most Newfoundland women were involved in the fishery. They'd work in the stage, splitting and salting, and then they'd spend countless hours drying the fish in the sun. When that fishery faded, many blamed the women. They just didn't want to work at fish anymore. Well, look at them now. Not all the squid are tubed. Some, a good many, in fact, are split, almost in the way you'd open up a codfish. The insides are taken out, the beak and eyes are removed, the head and tentacles left on. Later, these squid will be hung on poles and dried in the sun. These scenes are repeated in hundreds of communities the past few years, particularly in Bonavista and Notre Dame bays. The lowly squid, once used only as bait, has become really important to the northeast coast. The fresh squid, the ones we just saw being tubed, are taken to the fish plant right away. A lot of the plate cove squid goes to the Nickerson's plant here in Charleston, Bonavista Bay. Here the squid are inspected, packed, and frozen. Most of the frozen squid goes to Japan, but some now is marketed in Europe. Southern Mediterranean countries consume and reprocess a lot of squid. Spain in particular is a promising customer. But the sudden dramatic rise of the squid fishery has not been without its troubles. High prices, combined with abundant supply the past few years, has often caused fish plants to be blocked. Fishermen were unable to sell and were often forced to dump their catches. Some plants started a quota system, taking so much squid from each boat and dealing with bona fide fishermen first. But this wasn't easy. The plants were mesmerized trying to keep up with it. The fishermen were frustrated because they couldn't sell what they could catch. There was money lost, there was waste. Hello, what's this? A Soviet ship anchored right in the bay. We're usually trying to keep these fellows away from our shores. Here we are welcoming them. What's going on? Well, it's all part of a deal made between the fishermen's union and the foreigners, made with the blessing of the federal government. 
foreign ships would be allowed to buy surplus fish direct from the Newfoundland fishermen, a revolutionary concept, so to speak. Well, by the time 1979 had ended, Newfoundland fishermen had sold over 86,000 tons of squid. That's 172 million pounds. An industry which blossomed overnight was already worth $19 million. Would it continue? Well, before we answer that, let's look at the other side of the squid industry. Remember the squid on the Plate Cove Wharf that were being split? Well, here they are now being hung out to dry. The northeast coast of Newfoundland has been festooned with squid the past couple of years. In some places, every fence and pole and line is decorated. Wire trays are used to complete the drying. A lot of work. Long hours are spent picking apart the tentacles. Spreading the squid out taking them in out of the weather. Anyone can pitch in and help. And so you see whole families out working side by side at the squid. There's a lot of work to it. There is. A lot of work to this. You've got to have them so perfect. What are you doing now? Straightening out uh, the tentacles? Tentacles. That's what I'm doing now. If not, they'll get uh, pink and spoil my squid. What else do you have to watch out for now? Well, I have to watch out for them lying on the poles too long, too, and the, the bad weather. Makes it terrible, too. You had enough bad weather this year? We did. An awful lot. Too much. But we watched the weather, and we got the war flakes, and we gravel them in and get them on the flakes and put them out when the weather's fine. Old houses are useful now. Squids hang like rows of bets from ceiling and loft. Old stoves are stogged with firewood. Fans circulate the air as the squid people outwit the weatherman. So it's three or four days at least before they're dry. Oh, well, it's five to six days before they're properly dry for sale. Oh, definitely. I would say it's the hardest work you go at. Because it's non-stop? Non-stop. At least, you're at least 10 to 12 hours at it. It's not a thing you can take up in the pile. You cannot do it. Well, why do you keep going at it, Therese? Uh, you must like it. Well, it's a bit of money. That's the mo main thing. You know, you, you Get a dollar twenty-five for a pound of squid. Well, you got a hundred. You got a hundred and twenty-five dollars, and you can use it this day and age. I'm sure anybody can. I can. I know, and so I can imagine everybody else can. But there's no trouble to make a few thousand dollars in the Oh family. no, no trouble at all. No none whatsoever. Are many women at it now, or? Just oh yes, all the women. At first, when we started off, there was about nine or ten of us see here right in Plate Cove East, but then. If uh, last year, then everybody, see, you know, this. So you go out and boat too now, do you? Oh, yes, that's not strange to us women to go out and boat, not the uh, least. We love it. It's nothing like it. 
The only thing is that they, they don't know us from the main, because we dress up like the main. <laughs> they don't know the boys and the girls. The squid can't tell the boys from the girls either. No quarter is given, the ink flies high, and the ladies suffer just as many direct hits as the men. It's all part of the digging game. But what does all this mean to your average family? How much can people make drying squid? Mike Furlong buys for Terra Nova Fisheries, one of Newfoundland's largest exporters of dried squid. I figured he'd be in a good position to know. Well, if you get, uh, say, a couple of people involved and a couple of kids in the family, they can make anywhere from anywhere from 45 to 50 gallons of squid a year, no problem. And what would that mean in terms of money? That would mean an extra maybe six, seven thousand dollars in earnings. And so, men, women, and children were involved. 1979 was a bonanza. The buyers went crazy as they competed for the squid. The prices climbed to $1.75, then on to $2, once it reached $2.25 a pound. Squid worth more than lobsters. Buyers tumbling over themselves, offering top money. And many weren't particular over quality either. They'd buy anything. This angered those who made good squid. They knew it could ruin the market. Still, with the buyers offering the money, what could you do? people began making squid, particularly here in Notre Dame and Bonavista Bays. It was good, a lot of tea just worked maybe, but who cares when the sun is out and the soft Atlantic breeze is blowing and a buyer waiting with a pocket full of money. Some families made $14,000 on dried squid. In places where unemployment is high and the cod fishery lean, that's a lot of money. Then, at the beginning of the 1980 season, came the crash. Last year, it was a big price, and then it was, uh, well, it was a drop of 50%. Those were 100 percent because it was two. You were two dollars or two twenty-five last year, and now they're down to a dollar twenty-five. How do you feel about this? Well, we don't. The fishermen don't know anything about it. I suppose that's the the buyers and they know about the market. So the fishermen don't know anything about the market or what's causing it. Some say it is a the, the Japanese are jigging their own squid over there. I don't know whether it's true or not. But so, people are still going at it. Well, they're still got. Well, I mean, there's no other choice. You can't. You can't. Say you're going to give it up when you can make so much money, but you had to jig twice as much this year and do twice as much work this year as you did last year to get the same amount of money. Those buyers came here when they said that they were blacklisted because they were paying a dollar twenty-five per square when you were only paying a dollar ten, and they had to cut the square down to a dollar ten to remain. So you think there's price fixing? All the price is just price fixing, yeah. Sure, what price fixing is. So you're pretty discouraged with it all right now. Well, uh, if I was a young man, I would be discouraged. But at my, at my, at my age now, uh, it's only just a, a more or less a hobby and help the young people understand. But your son must be pretty well disgusted. Uh, yes, he's, he's disgusted too. Yeah. I'm jigging just as much squid this year as last year, but I'm not getting so so good a price. I uh, I guess I'll make half what I made last year. <clears throat> you did well last year with the squid, did you? Oh, yeah, very well. 
So you're a bit uh, disappointed, I suppose. Well, if you get a half uh, half your earnings cut in a year, would you wouldn't you be uh, disappointed? What do you blame it on? But I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't say what's the trouble, but there's something wrong. The sisters, the markets are glut. But uh, I don't. There's nothing on news about the markets being glutted or nothing. So only, you only what you're told. You don't really trust what's happening. No, I don't trust what's happening. There's it's something going on that someone should look into. I think. Hong Kong, on the other side of the world. A busy dockside, with produce coming in from all over the world. Some of it is Newfoundland squid. This is our main marketplace. Here, our squid competes with squid from Taiwan and China, from Korea, Australia, Argentina. It's a busy, bustling place. Millions of people crowded together on a little island. A lot of them like to eat squid. And what really happened to our squid? Year, Why did the prices tumble? And up to half, about Mr. George Yu is one of Hong Kong's main importers of dried squid. Hong Kong. And let's look back. 78 season is a average good year. But Newfoundland squid in Hong Kong is only half a million pounds. And the very next year, 79, you jump from half a million pounds to three million pounds. There's six times of Newfoundland squid coming to a market. And it's going to take a longer time to naturally or comfortably absorb it. So and that is the oversupply problem. And that's the first one. Now, the second reason is that Hong Kong is a very uh, small area. We have a small area with lots of people. Space is always at a premium, especially warehousing space, and uh, also cold storage space. And the oversupply is cost so much to keep in the uh, cold storage, to, to warehousing. And quite often, even warehousing may not be available. So people are forced to dump. So everybody try to outsell the other guy. And they try to get whoever they want to buy so that they can keep whatever space they have available. So at the point, the price is not even a question is whether people will buy it or not and that drives the price way down. Two million dollars was lost on Newfoundland squid in Hong Kong last year. Prices tumbled. A good time to order a scoff of squid in a restaurant. But as far as the importers were concerned, they would not be stung again. The market door was slammed shut and could only be opened if the price fell. And that's why the price fell so drastically. Newfoundland fishermen bore the loss, but did the local buyers? Were their profits cut in half? Fishermen remain suspicious. They have no voice in this industry. Yet the Fishermen's Union conceded an equally severe slash in the sale of fresh squid to Japan. Obviously, this big, potentially lucrative Far Eastern market is a volatile one. Somehow, some way, we've got to stabilize our exports to the east to make sure that our fishermen will never again be expected to absorb such drastic slashes in price. The jig and ground is empty now. The squid have left our shores. But they'll be back next summer. And despite the rip in price they suffer this year, our fishermen will be ready to go squidding again. For this fishery has brought a touch of prosperity to hundreds of places that really needed it. It's become important to a lot of families. So there's hope mingled with distrust and bitter disappointment here on the coast. Hope that the squid fishery will blossom again, that prices will rise, that we'll figure out a better way to organize and control the squid fishery, so that next year, the squid juice will rain again, and the clank of the jiggers echo across the cove from the boats on the squid jigging ground. <laughs>